Yat eko asana. The net lap of hot dog is ani. Do as an adole and don't not lini ye. Dick do open a hitchy has zigi. Do shy de tanigi. I see by Henson. She a tano in this year. Grey Hills Academy High School J. Nashinish. Ah, conde, I see all ye de nashaigi. Hawaii de nasha. I want to thank the graduating class of the year 2020 for giving me this honor and privilege to speak at their commencement exercise. It is through hardship and difficulty that they persevered to be here today. But before I do that, I want to acknowledge some very important people that we need to acknowledge who have made these things possible. First of all, I'd like to start with her school head principal, head leader, Dr. Lauren Hudson, CEO and principal of Great Hills Academy High School, and his administrative staff, Vaughn Salabai, assistant principal and AD, and Mr. Richard Gray, statistician and analyst. And last of all, you seniors, the graduating class of 2020. It wouldn't be proper if I didn't acknowledge some other people, however, at this time in the crisis in which we are enduring. I'd like to introduce or acknowledge the Honorable Mr. Kitso of our school board of Academy High School and the Honorable members of that board as well. I want to acknowledge the faculty and staff and all those who have various responsibilities that they perform each and every day to make sure that our school is a safe and a clean place to go to. To the parents, the core of these graduating seniors, I acknowledge you and thank you for the sacrifice and all that you have done to make sure that yet your child is here today to celebrate in this wonderful commencement exercise. And to the grandparents, the anchor of each family, for your kindness, for your love, and your example and teachings. Also, I want to recognize the friends and relatives of these graduates who have encouraged and given these students hope to endure through hardship, and through all that they had to do to be here today to graduate. And also, last but not least, if they are watching all the honored guests who will eventually, are watching now, or will eventually turn in, tune in to this video. Specifically, I'm thinking about our honorable Mr. President of the Great Navajo Nation, Jonathan Neth, who himself was once upon a time my very own student. So Mr. President, I acknowledge you and honor you as the President of the Great Navajo Nation and thank you for your services. And I know you were, you were paying attention because one of the broadcasts that I was watching, you said that the prime example of sovereignty is self-reliance. And when I heard that, I knew that you had paid attention, at least on that day. Thank you. Mr. Nez. Otto, I want to acknowledge the tireless efforts, the unselfish work of the doctors, nurses, nurses assistants, technicians, EMTs, and all the hospital administrators and staff for the untiring service they give to those who are in need. I know you've worked long hours you put your own lives on the line in danger in behalf of others. So I choose to acknowledge you as well on this day. I also would have to acknowledge the men and women of the Navajo Nation Law Enforcement, Law Enforcement Division who each and every day put in their gear to go out and serve and to protect the public. I acknowledge you, all of you. Many of you are my friends, some of you are my students, 
So I thank you for what you do in behalf of us. I also want to acknowledge the veterans who have served their country, who have served our country. And as a fellow veteran, I understand. It wasn't always good times. We went through some hard times. But I acknowledge you, veterans, young and old, for giving your lives for our country and giving your time. Some returned, some did not. But we cannot forget them. And finally, I want to talk to you, you graduating seniors. This is your day, the year 2020, May 22nd, 2020. Remember, you're the only class that will have graduated with a perfect vision. And what a vision of the world, huh? A pandemic. There will never be any other class of 2020 in the history of mankind. And I hope there will never be another class that will go through a pandemic like you have, but you have prevailed. Today, seniors represents 12 years of going to school, of getting up, getting ready, doing your chores, getting on the bus, walking, or being dropped off by someone who cared for you. Many of you are dropped off by grandparents, so I acknowledge them too. Some of you were late coming to school, but not because you were late, but because if your ride is late, you're going to be late. So in my class, I did not hold that against you. The COVID-19 virus is a pandemic. It's a world threat. The world is under attack. And so is our reservation even Tuba City, Arizona. This pandemic has created extreme hardship on our physical well-being, our emotional well-being, our economic struggles, our intellectual challenges, social expectations, and even loss of loved ones. I understand that because for myself on May 20, April 22nd, I lost my very own brother. So I understand how it is to grieve for those whom we love and not being able to be there when they left us because we were sheltered in. So I understand very clearly how it feels to have that feeling of emptiness and loss. However, you have prevailed and endure it through all of this. Your personal strength and stamina, your determination, endurance, and endurance to finish strong, to go on with your vision of what you want to be, your life to be. You did not surrender to the challenges of the deadly virus that has affected the world. Instead, you found a way to get it done. I commend each and every one of you for overcoming this challenge. I am proud of you. We are proud of you. We are very proud of you for accomplishing what you set out to do 12 years ago. Not letting this online courses and all these adjustments you had to make so that you can graduate on this day. I am sure you remember all of the stories I told you in our classes, remember? They were always funny at the end, but they were all true. Remember the one when I was put on long-term suspension? When I was called to the office and I was told that I was going to be sent home for a while? I thought maybe a week or two. Then I was told no is for the rest of the semester <laughs> from January to May 1961. And then I was also told, quote, that my feet would never walk into a college classroom. I was so glad to get out of high school. It was done. 
I was happy then. I was a very happy person. I would share these stars with you so you would be able to really see what I was trying to say. I gave you high expectations and they were placed upon you knowing that they were difficult to attain. But I wanted to, you to find out within yourself that you had what it took to succeed. That you were born with that. That you were born with that through your ansestry. Then then na behodok is ani. You have that in you to be strong. I told you these stories and I raised the expectations so you would dig deep to find out that you truly had what it took to succeed. I was happy to see you smile and laugh at my stories. They were funny, weren't they? But they all had a meaning to it. The greatest thing was that you did something about it. I would share the stories, like I said, because I know you would learn. Because I also know that someday you are going to face personal challenges, criticism, even personal attacks on your abilities and physical appearance. Even by those who thought were your friends and maybe from your own family. But that's where the, the secret is. What are you going to do about it? What did I do about it when I was told that my feet would never walk into a college classroom? Of course they hurt. These unkind words or predictions that you'll never do it, you can't do it, you'll never be somebody, you're going to be just like so-and-so. These are motivators. It could be a put-down, but it's how you see it. How did I see it? Did I like it? No. But I then, I later on, turned, I turned, around, turned it around and said, these are things that are going to motivate me. In the martial arts, we we're taught, you change a defense to an offense. Then you get moving. I know how it is. I've been there. Of course they hurt. Those unkind words that are intended to cut you down. But you cannot be put down. You can only be put down, my friends, if you allow it. Don't allow it. You might cry, like I did. You might be sad, like I was. But there was always hope. And the person that gave me hope was who? Myself. So what I'm saying to you is this. If you can believe that you can do something, you will. No matter what people tell you, you can do it. This is where you can either be a hero or a zero. You can be in the Hall of Fame or hang on the wall of shame. You decide that. I know. I've been there. And sometimes you're the only one who believes what you believe. That you can do it. But again, like I said, that's where the secret to success is is what you do about it. How many of you, I've asked you before, and some of you raise your hand, how many of you have ever been called ugly, laughed at, called a name? I have. What did I do about it? I went to college. My high school teacher asked me what was two plus two. I said five. And he laughed and made an example of me, saying, see, he can even add. But in 1962, a year after I graduated, a book was published entitled Clear Thinking. Two plus two is five. Because it depends on what you're thinking and what the symbols represent. So I was right. See what I'm saying? 
You may think one way, but eventually you're going to find out that you were right. You will put into action the things you feel are good for you. The worst thing to do is to feel sorry for yourself. The worst thing to do is to have somebody pity you. Do not look for pity. Look for opportunity to grow, to become somebody. I know. I've been there. You, you wouldn't believe the names I was called when I was growing up. I did not like it. But now that I look back, I'm grateful that I heard it. Because it made me go to the weight room, lift that bar, go to college. Statistics 500? What's that? I never even took algebra in high school, but I passed. Life is, and your life will be full of surprises. Enjoy them along the way, my friends. You're going to do things that you never have expected to ever do. Let me name some of them. Did you know that I never interviewed or applied for a job on the reservation? My first teaching experience at Monument Valley High School was with the principal. And to summarize his words, this is what he told me. You need to go to college. But I already graduated from college. So the following week I showed him my papers he took me to HR. The HR lady looked at it and said, it's all okay. So he said, sign him up. And that's where I stayed for 30 plus years. My work at Gray Hills Academy High School, I didn't apply for that. Mr. Andy Ta called me one day and asked me to come down and work at Gray Hills Academy High School, which I always wanted to do. I always wanted to do. I even called after I retired from Monument Valley High School to the AD, but he never, re never returned my calls. So when a call came from Mr. Tal, I said, this is my opportunity, knowing that Gray Hills had never beat MV at all, not even once. But you know what? We had our day. We finally beat MV in a game. And I can tell you, folks, miracles do happen. But we have to make it happen. We have to believe. You know, I never applied for head football coach, but I became one. I never applied to be a dean of students, but was told, that's your office. When I asked, what do you want me to do? I was told, you know what to do. And the principal walked out. I never applied to be the school CEO, but I was one. And I was told, if you, take, if you become a CEO, you have to take the superintendent's test. Did I want to? Of course not. But I had to. So, being an obedient person, I took the test hardly ever studying for it, and miracles happen. I passed it. I never wanted to be a commencement speaker, but here I am today speaking to you. See how things happen? You've got to be ready. And finally, don't laugh at this one here. I never wanted to be a school teacher. I really didn't, I, I didn't like school teachers. School teachers only reminded me of what I couldn't do, or what I could never become. But here I am. And I loved every year, every moment, teaching all of you students. In a way, I am happy that this video is going to be put online 
because I do want to thank all of my students that I ever taught, all of the athletes I ever coached, to say to all of you, thank you for blessing me every day, for the privilege I had to associate with you and at least teach you something. I never ever judged a student. I saw them as each one to be a worthwhile and worthy individual who deserved every piece of understanding. I've had them all. I've been to the services. I had much experiences with my students. Good times and some sad times. But they're all part of my treasure of memories. So now, the truth of the matter is, you're going to face the same challenges that I faced. You're going to be criticized. You're going to be put down. You're going to be called a name. You may not have the fa most fanciest clothes. Meaning you may not be the most handsomest or most prettiest. So what? Do what you have to do. And somebody who is worthy of you will recognize you for who you are. Take time to think of the positive results that will come out if you persevere. Do not give up. It's going to be so easy to say, I'll take a break and come back next semester. Most of those who do that never come back. So if you go to college, stick with it. Through hard times, bad times, whatever times. I've known some Navajo men now who when they were going to college their meals were a thirst buster and a snicker bar. That's all they ever ate. That's all they could ever afford. But they graduated. You will not and cannot grow without some type of resistance. Resistance is what makes you grow. When you come to the weight room, we add plates so you leave stronger. We do not insult you by saying, here comes Henry, load the bar with some bags of bird feathers. He won't like it. And today, after your graduation, as you go home, I know you're going to have graduation dinner. And some of you will have steaks. And you sit down at the table. And everybody will have an inch thick sirloin, ribeye, or some type of steak, T-bone steak. And when it's your turn, here comes the person serving you. They come to you with a plate. And on the plate is a small jar of pure beef Gerber baby food with a tiny plastic spoon. And you ask that person, what's this? And he'll say, it's Gerber all beef baby food. Why are you giving it to me? And he'll tell you, because it's easy. You just put that nice little spoon in there and put it in your mouth and swallow. The other people are cutting, chewing, trimming. You, you just do that. Would you like that? I don't think so. I know what you would say. I want a steak. This is a mistake. So, the analogy is, I'm trying to tell you, when hard things come your way, buck up and take it. Do it. It's for your own good. It's like sheep camp. Don't ever forget sheep camp teachings. So, last of all, wherever you go and whatever you do, 
Always remember who you are and where you come from. Always remember that. That's what I've done for the last 50 years. I have never forgotten my people, my values, but with the utmost respect for the teachings of the Diné Nabeho and the Kisani. I remember those teachings. Remember your clans. Your clan is your sacred identity and connection to Dijin, to the holy people. Don't forget your family, the ones who gave you life and raised you the best they possibly could by making sacrifices, by doing what they could. Sure, it wasn't always good. I've been there. I know. I know how it is to go hungry. I know how it is not to have the best clothes and go to school. I know how it is to not have things other students had. But I prevail. Don't forget your sheep camp where you first were taught the values of work, sacrifice, family unity, and life. Do not be lazy to get it done. And never forget your sacred teachings. They're so powerful. The sacred teachings of Sa'anagai Sadbinanditin, Do Bike Hoizon Sadbinanditin. These teachings keep you solid. They keep you firm. They keep you intact. Listen to them. Don't deny them. Self-esteem, self-worth, your physical and your spiritual well-being. Atla Ago, you need you need both of them. Out of the teachings of your Che, Uzojek and Nantin. To be respectful, to be honest, to be kind, to be forgiving. And the teachings of your Nali man. In Nayek or not Newton. To man up, get it done. Don't be lazy. Don't be a crybaby. Just go to work. Buck up. Take care of it. So I would say finally, don't ever deny your language. Even if you don't speak it fluently, at least have a reverence and respect for it. If somebody says something in Navajo to you, and you, you might be in Tennessee or Michigan, and you know it's a Navajo word, don't say, excuse me. The person is reaching out to you. I know it happened to me. I'm in Heber, Utah. I go to Walmart. I'm looking for a special item. I go to the front desk and ask this Belagana lady, I'm looking for this. She's always down to aisle so-and-so. That lady will help you down there. So I go to that lady, guess what she says? Uh, mm. I go, hey, yeah, eh, ha, there's not, nah. She says, she's from Cameron. I said, I work at Gray Hills. She said, oh, I've got some relatives going to Gray Hills. So I asked her, who are they? She gave me their names. So when I came back to Gray Hills, I said, hey, I met your aunt. And they said, yeah, I know her. And one of you graduating seniors, you know who I'm talking about? That's your aunt. All because she said, uh, mm. Did I say, excuse me? Is that a language? It is a language. She was asking me, yes, what is it? So I told her, I'm looking for this. And she directed me to where that stuff was. What a beautiful exchange. Huh? To me, it was very nice, very pleasant. And sometimes now you don't always have the perfect grammar. Your friend says to you, I just bought a truck. And you say, is it? In your English class, you probably fail. But in Navajo, it's okay. And don't forget the words. Hey... Those are good. Those are endearing words. So, whatever you do, my friends, wherever you go, I hope you will succeed. Take care of yourself physically, emotionally, 
intellectually, socially, and economically. Be safe in all that you do. Whatever you do, be known as a kind and honest person who knows how to be a good human being. So to you, I give you now the closing words of Thomas Jefferson when he said in the Declaration of Independence, all men are created equal. And he was right. He was right in that all of us really have only one life to live on this earth as we journey our time on this earth. No matter who we are, no matter how rich or poor, tall or short or whatever, we only have one time. So, my young friends, make use of your life. Succeed in whatever you do. So to you, I give you my sincere love and affection and appreciation and my fondest aloha. Look strong, be strong, stay strong. Yeah, they just need all this. Tano.